The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, this is Shubhada Chaudhuri from the DAADIC Mumbai. And today I will be taking you through the webinar, how to find a PhD guide in Germany. So hope you can all hear me properly. Could you just uh, put up your uh, hands if you can hear me properly? Yeah, I can see some hands that are going up. Okay, thank you everybody. So let us now start with PhD in Germany and hope you all, all can see my screen as well. So this webinar is conducted under the AGs of the DAAD. So let us first see what is the DAAD. The DAAD is an acronym for the German word Deutsche Akademischer Austausch Dienst, which is the German Academic Exchange Service. And the DAAD was founded in 19, uh, in, um, uh, uh, in 1895, so there is a, it's a, a long journey that we have had. Headquarters are in Bonn. We have more than 70 foreign-based branches and information centers all over the world. There are more than 500 lectoren, so loosely translated as lecturers, who are part of the DAAD family who, who teach at various institutions all over the world and more than one lakh scholarship recipients each year. So overall, the DAAD at various stages uh, offers various scholarships, and there are more than a lakh of scholarship recipients in over, uh, over uh, each year now. So research in Germany basically is a very important part of the policy and the psyche of the German population. And as we can see on this screen, there have been over 25 Nobel laureates in the last 25 years. And if you can see this uh, slide, then you will note that it is in all subject areas that there are German Nobel Prize winners. In India, we generally have this idea that Germany is good only for engineering and specifically then again, mechanical engineering. But that is not so. As you can see here, there are Nobel Prize, uh, Prize winners in the uh, field of literature, pure sciences like chemistry and physics, in medicine, and also in the humanities side, you know. So basically, Germany does research on all types of subjects. It is not limited to only engineering and technology at all. So in Germany, there is a little bit of a difference uh, than what we have in India in terms of institutions of higher education. On the one side, there are the universities and the technical universities. And on the other side, there are, of course, universities of applied sciences, which are very specialized uh, universities. And then there are the colleges of music, art and film. So basically, you can do a PhD at the universities and technical universities, especially consecutive PhDs, which means that you can immediately start a PhD after your master's. Whereas at the universities of applied sciences, you cannot do a PhD. They are not mandated to award a PhD. And uh, that is of, and then of course, you will have to shift to a technical university or a university for PhD after some years of research experience. Then I look at the foreign students in Germany. There is a large population of foreign students in Germany, above 2.8 million students, with 12.8% foreigners. That is really a very large number. That is why Germany is called the land of ideas. The more people get together from various cultures, it also opens up the mind for research in the sense that you start accepting that to a to that to a same problem there are various ways to get to it so that also you know opens up your uh, world view and thirdly then germany is the third most popular country for international students the worldwide as we can see here also the indian students have been on a consistent rise to go to germany 
in 2010 11 there were merely 5000 students who were going to germany for higher studies but over the years it has increased by nearly 129% reaching 15500 plus students in 16 and 17 and now of course to the main points of a phd in germany First and foremost, we will be discussing about where can I do my doctorate or research? What are the fields of research? How can I apply for a PhD position? How can I find a guide? Are there any scholarships? We already discussed about foreign students and regarding life in Germany. Uh, there is a very beautiful website that we have that is marked over here as well study in germany and if you can go on to this website you will find a lot of information regarding life in germany about various studies about various cities how the students live there are also very nice videos of students who are uh, who answer your questions so you can go on to this site to get more information about that so basically in, in germany there are two ways of doing a phd there is the individual PhD, which is the traditional PhD that we know about. And then there is a structured PhD. In an individual PhD, you are supervised by a university professor. And you have to find out in advance who is best suited to you for the, for the PhD in your subject field. And then you also have to get in touch with that professor and uh, convince the professor that you are the right student. Doctoral candidates in an individual PhD work independently. And this, of course, requires very good organizational skills and a very high degree of self-discipline because you are your own limit in that sense. Then there are the structured PhD programs similar to those in the Anglo-Saxon countries where you join either a research group or a graduate school. They have a certain topic which they are researching on and you join this group. You will have a team of supervisors which will be guiding you throughout the project and there is a curriculum of accompanying courses with interdisciplinary focus so it means that there is coursework that is a part of the structured phd now both these phds generally in germany are mandated to take approximately three years only if you can if your um, guide can justify why it is taking longer for you then uh, you you know you can go ahead and then uh, extend your phds so the basic admission requirements for phd are either a full two years full-time masters or an mphil degree from india and the standard examinations that might be required are TOEFL or IELTS, which are the English uh, speaking uh, uh, exams, a GMAT or a GRE. But of course, a lot of structured programs do ask for TOEFL and IELTS. Then we will look at the cost of living per month in Germany. The German government has mandated that as a student, you require uh, approximately 794 euros to be able to subsist in Germany on a monthly basis. This is a student uh, um, expenses that we are looking at. And as you can see, the rent and utilities and food takes the biggest chunk of your living expenses. Most universities also have a uh semester contribution as part of their uh, structure phd in uh, germany is generally free of cost uh, but there is a semester contribution ranging from 50 euros to 300 euros which you have to pay plus your living cost now as a non-eu student you are allowed to work on a part-time basis on your student visa you're allowed to work for 120 full days or 240 half days without a work permit. If you get a teaching or a research, a research assistantship, then you can work longer. And such contracts must be always informed to the Aliens Registration Office. There are a lot of job opportunities that are available in Germany. As we will see in the next slides, there is a lot of research that takes place in Germany. And um, not only in, on university-based research, but also non-university-based institution research. 
you are allowed to stay back for 18 months in germany to look for suitable employment after obtaining your phd degree you your work your student visa will be converted into a work permit once you find appropriate employment and of course job options exist not only in germany but also in india and the world over because these phds are are basically internationally recognized uh, programs so now to the main point let us look at a, a little more deeply at the german research landscape so as i said earlier research takes place not only at universities that is institutions of higher education but also at non university research facilities and a lot of industrial research also takes place in germany so basically at the higher education institutions there are approximately 107 universities and 217 universities of applied sciences along with the other uh, institutions and the features of german universities is mainly unity in research and teaching you have to understand that to do research in germany uh, the innovation that comes out of germany is based on the sort of teaching that they have in germany the freedom that is given during the teaching itself that is what propels people to take up research in germany there is a broad range of subjects available and as i said earlier again there is a strong research orientation in the policy and psyche of the german population so let us look at some of the non university research institutions these are the max planck society a lot of you who are wanting to do phd must have heard about the max planck society it is one of the most popular research institutions in germany the helmholtz association of national research centers the leibniz association and the fraunhofer gesellschaft we will look in a little bit in detail at these non university research institutions now so the max planck society has basically 83 institutes and approximately a budget of 2.1 billion euros then of course what is it that the max planck does they do a lot of basic research in natural sciences life sciences social sciences and humanities and max planck is the home to 18 nobel laureates so far and this is a person centered research organization then of course there is the helmholtz association the research centers are much lesser in terms of the max planck over here but the budgets are nearly the same because helmholtz take care of the large investment that is required to do the 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 uh, uh, you know very specific uh, uh, large investment research projects that they take up and they are basically into energy earth and environment health key technologies structures of matter aeronautics space and transport and the helmholtz association is mainly focused towards applied research then the leibniz association with its 89 institutes and 1.73 billion euros of budget now they believe in theory along with practice so basically it is not only all theoretical there is a lot of practice uh, practical research that goes into it the leibniz association is into natural engineering and environmental sciences economic spatial and social sciences and humanities they look at large scientific infrastructure and research based services and they have a lot of archives museums and national libraries available to their researchers <coughs> then there is the fraunhofer gesellschaft which has got 67 institutes and 2.1 billion euros budget they are largely into integration of scientific findings into useful innovations for industry and society so again this is very uh, applied research oriented 
They are into health, security, communication, mobility, energy, and environment. And they do a lot of contractual research for the industry and government. In fact, the Frauenhofer plays such an important part in our daily lives. All of us listen to music on our phones on a daily basis. And it is at the Frauenhofer Institute that the MP3 protocol was developed. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there are other research institutions also that are available in Germany. And these are the federal research institutes. The lender institutions which are the state level institutions. And then there are the academies of science. So as I said earlier, there is a large amount of research that goes on in Germany. And even there is a lot of intensive industrial research that is available in Germany. 70% of R&D investment comes from the industry. And there is an excellent industry academia cooperation available in Germany. So now where do I find more information regarding how to do my PhD or you know the positions that are available or the research that is taking place in my field. So here are some of the links that we are giving you. There is a research in Germany. Website that is available for your perusal. Then you have the various structured doctoral programs listed on the DAAD international programs website. <coughs> then you have the research training groups available at the DFG. And you have international Max Planck research schools available on their website. And each institution again has their own websites. And the PhD Germany database where also you can find the research positions where you, it is where you can go through the DAAD portal. Then there is the research explorer. So these are the various options that you have to look up where you can do your research once you have decided on the topic. Now, of course, contacting the host professor in terms of an individual PhD is extremely important because you have the professors get so many requests on a daily basis. You have to stand out in these requests as one candidate who is really uh, uh, qualified for working with the professor. So first of all, it should be a crisp individualized first communication, which would be an email in today's times. It should not be you have to write a synopsis basically that would contain what you want to do. So your topic, why you are choosing the specific professor at the specific university and why should the professor consider you? This is like a letter of motivation or a SOP that you would be writing. Now, some things that you have to keep in mind regarding contacting the host professor is that in Germany, professorship is taken very seriously. And lots of times you will find professors with double or triple degrees as well. So you might have a doctor, doctor, engineer, a rare, not, and then the name. Please be sure that you write the complete, uh, how should I say, degrees as well as the name properly of the professor. This not only shows your eye for detail, but also the diligence of the work that the professor has done in the sense that you know and you are respecting him with the complete name, him or her. Then again, your communication should not be more than a scrolling one and a half page. Because the longer it is, then obviously, you know, one loses interest in reading a very long uh, pro because this is not a research proposal you are really sending. It is just a synopsis of what you want to do. Please also be uh, take care that you understand what the holiday patterns are there in Germany and don't write to the professors during holidays or even Saturday, Sunday, there is a very good, uh, you know, uh, fa uh, family and work life uh, 
balance in Germany. And when you are working, you are working on a weekend, your it's your time. So don't write generally mails on weekends. You will not get answers on weekends. It is also a good idea to write your mails first thing Monday morning so that it not your time Monday morning their time so that it pops up first when the professor opens the mail uh, the uh, email uh, the, the post box. Then of course your Indian contacts can put in a word generally if you have approached the professor through one of your seniors or juniors or your uh, professors then they can put in a word. And if you don't get a communication from the professor within 10, 15 days, then you can write a repeat communication as well. Then the do's that when you are contacting a host professor. As I said earlier, you have to write a synopsis, but also you have to take care to gather information about the professor's research work because your interests have to match that with the interests of the professor in very close tuning. It is a give and take. It is not only a take. Also, the professor needs to know what you are going to offer to him in terms of uh, research capacity. Always write individualized mails. Don't send bulk mails don't write dear sir slash madam that shows that you don't have an eye for detail and you don't respect the professor enough to have found out what the name of the professor you want to work with is <clears throat> and do proofread your email before sending it out again spelling mistakes show that you you are lacking in eye for detail and in research eye for detail comprises a very large aspect of it then don't in contacting a host professor don't use colored letters colored backgrounds and unusual fonts keep it as simple as possible don't add pictures and animations and please never ever use sms language or slang as i said earlier don't start the email with dear sir and madam and don't start sentences frequently also with sir or madam don't flatter the recipient be true to the research work that he or she is doing don't pressurize the recipient by saying, I would like to work, I would like to work, please take me, please take me, and don't beg in that sense. It really creates a very bad impression. You have to put in what your capability is and let the professor decide whether he wants to have that capability in his lab or not. <clears throat> Again, when you the professor writes back to you, often they ask for a research proposal. So as we mentioned earlier, it has to match very closely with what the professor is researching on. It has to show originality. It has to show the grasp of the subject matter or the problem that you are dealing with. Your knowledge of the research field, relevance and value of the proposed research and the rigor of your research intention. And once again, editing and proofreading is very very important so now these are the basic topics that we have i have touched upon the daad also has got a has got flagship scholarships for a phd there are two scholarships that are available from the daad one is a PhD research uh, scholarship that is for three years for any field. And the deadline for this particular uh, uh, for this uh, scholarship is uh, the 15th of October every year. For to start your PhD next year in October. So there is a lag time of approximately one year since the time you apply to when you actually start doing your PhD. The second 
scholarship is the sandwich model scholarship which is also called the binationally supervised scholarship in which you are registered as a phd student in india and you get a scholarship for approximately one year to do your research in germany in this scholarship you require two guides one in india and one in germany so these are the two scholarships that are available from the daad and all the information is available on our website www.daad.in we have five offices all over india we have one in chennai bangalore mumbai pune and the head office is at new delhi and you can write to any one of our offices with any queries that you might have and this is the email of the new delhi office all our contact details are also available on the daad.in website another thing which i would like to tell you is that we also have a group of approximately 26 young ambassadors who have either completed their education in germany or done their internships research in research internships in germany or are still doing working in germany or studying in germany these uh, this group is again listed on our website and these are people who if you have any queries specific they are from different fields so if you have specific queries regarding those fields you can also write to them apart from writing to us at the office so now basically i am done with my presentation and i would like to take up questions let me see what questions i have okay so uh, basically uh, the requirements uh, for a phd in germany are a full time masters two years masters in india or an mphil in india those are the two main things and what you will generally require an, is an ielts or toefl especially for structured phd you might require a gmat or a gre depending uh, on the field that you are choosing yeah then just a moment let me see again for postdocs the link the websites that we mentioned for phd will also help with postdocs so that those are the same websites that you will be using yes the dad i see bangalore is closed temporarily that is right Is there any age bar? No, there is no age bar for doing a PhD, but there is a specification for the scholarship and that is that your last degree should not be older than six years. So that is the specification for scholarship. If you want to go as a self-funded student, then there is no age bar. The knowledge of German is not compulsory, but is always very handy. And it is recommended that if you are going as a self-funded student, then you have at least A1 level of German language proficiency before you go to Germany. Because the moment the aircraft door opens, everything is going to be in German. So although your research language is going to be English, your social language still remains German. And for people who are thinking of applying for the scholarship, then of course there is a four to six months uh, German course that is available as an award of the scholarship. So German knowledge is not compulsory, but always recommended. All right, then let me see what there is there how to enroll for the structured phd is basically you have to visit our international programs web search engine 
and there you will find the application details for the structured phd that you are interested in and you follow the guidelines given in the uh, in the application forms faculty is very stringent in germany and phd also is very rigorous in germany so please keep that in mind the website that talks about life in germany is here you can see on the slide study in germany study hyphen in dot de yes that is the website then uh, Uh, we on our download section on our website there is a there are there is a download for the uh, details about a research proposal so please go through that who are looking at how to write a research proposal all right then can we work in germany after completing phd yes you can very well work in germany as was told uh, earlier also you are allowed to stay back in germany for approximately 18 months to look for a job and during this search phase you can do part time jobs to take care of yourself regarding the application of scholarships please visit our website daad.in and complete scholarship and application details along with what documents are required and everything is available on those it is too much for me to go through each scholarship individually right now but you can log on to our websites or write a mail to us and then we will send you the details Yes you are allowed to work on campus during your PhD you are allowed as a non EU student to work for 120 full days or 240 half days I can't read properly Humboldt fellowship you will have to contact them the daad does not have any information about humboldt fellowships <clears throat> all da all phd programs need not necessarily be funded it depends whether the professor has or the university has funds for that particular phd or not again for the sandwich program i would like to reiterate the fact that you are registered as a phd student in india and you have to have two guides one in india and one in germany to guide you through your research over here the degree will be awarded by the indian university you might be able to apply without ielts or toefl only if your professor or the structured program that you are applying to accepts you without a uh, ielts or toefl and you need a written confirmation from them no btechs with uh, uh, you can apply to germany for a phd only after generally you have done a two years masters and uh, uh, btechs generally just a bachelor's degree is not sufficient
yeah a lot of these non university research institutions like the max planck or for fraunhofer do have tie ups with universities because as uh, as uh, non university research institutes they do not have the mandate to award a phd so then you will they will have a collaboration with the university to award the phd and you will basically be doing research at the institute but the award of the phd will be from the university scholarship is given for 3 years yeah i think i have answered most of the questions prime regarding prime prime is not administered from india so you have to go to the daad website and see who is the contact person in germany and send email to them regarding your regarding the information that you want okay uh yeah if i think uh, that is all that i have to will you please explain okay the daad phd scholarship basically covers uh, has a stipend of 1000 euros per month plus it has got the lump sum award for your to and fro flight tickets plus it will take care of your um, german medical insurance and if you are married then there is some amount of spouse uh, uh fund that is also there and if you have children then there is a little bit of children stipend also that is available okay so i think i have answered most of the questions are there any more questions remaining no the dad does not have a specific scholarship for post docs the leading institutions for post docs are dfg and humboldt fellowships there are i'm sorry there are no short term internship opportunities from the dad but if you can fund yourself then you can write to the professor yes i think uh, i have covered uh, everything if anybody i let me go through the yeah mahesh parihar could you write your question please yeah okay then people thank you for attending the webinar and if you have any further question you can always write to us at any of the offices and we will be glad to help you out with your queries thank you so much for attending the webinar bye bye